glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are in the middle. You hold it all together. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the God of the middle. You hold it all together. Listen, my voices. These are the first words I've spoken all day, so. <laughs> but I'm glad to let them be to the praise and glory of our God. He is the God of the middle, the God of our middle ground, alpha and omega and present even right now. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to our Sunday afternoon worship service here at Crossover Empowerment Kingdom Ministries, where we are crossing over under the cross, led by my amazing husband, Prophet Jerry Isaac and myself and, and standing alongside of us is a team of beautiful, amazing, anointed leaders, um, second to none in the kingdom of God. And we are so grateful to God to have their trust and their loyalty um, to walk and serve in the kingdom alongside of us and under our leadership. We thank God. We thank God. I hope that, that the, the worship bless those who are in the Zoom room. Um, I'm sorry for those who are watching live on Facebook that you couldn't experience it, but Facebook just has so many restrictions that we have just decided to no longer stream music on Facebook Live because it restricts the, the uh, release of the word and other things going forward, and, and we just don't want to miss the word of God and the teachings that go forth. So if you want to enjoy the worship, you have to come into the Zoom room early with us so you can enjoy the worship. So the scripture for today as the, the psalmists were ministering um, the song called You Hold It All Together by Maverick City. You can go ahead and find that on YouTube and just let that song bless you. You hold it all together talking to our Lord, our Savior, our Heavenly Father how he holds it all together in his most capable hands. In his hands, he nothing falls through the cracks. Nothing gets lost. Nothing is broken in his hands. He can hold it all together. He is the alpha and the omega and the God of the middle present, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there wherever you are. He is there. If you make your bed in hell, he is there. There's nowhere you can go to escape him. Why? Because Psalm 24 teaches us, hey, our scripture for today, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Matter of fact, I want to read it from the King James because that's where we are. Uh, many of us who've been in, in, in church for a minute anyway, right? That's the way we are used to hearing it. And it just resonates in our spirit when we hear it read the way that we cut our teeth on it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He holds it all together because it's his. <laughs> it's his idea his creation, his precious inheritance and prize. It's his. For he, verse two, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? The hill belongs to God. Or who shall stand in his holy place. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing 
from the Lord mm. and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. Mm. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. What is the psalmist saying? These heads, they represent our control center, our thought process, our mind, our perspective. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates, the portals, the entrance way for the information, for the revelation, for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to flow into us and out through us. Lift up your heads, O oh, ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and what shall happen? And the king of glory shall come in. What is this saying? The king of glory may manifest through you. Mm. My goodness. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this afternoon, Lord God, with humble hearts, hungry hearts, thirsty hearts, hearts that are loyal to you, hearts that have faith and, and expectancy in you, hearts that are looking to the leaders of this world, hearts that are looking to our pocketbooks, hearts that aren't looking to any man, anything, any system of this world, but hearts that are looking to you, hungry, for a word from you, hungry, desiring a look from you, a nod, a wink, a glance, a, turn your face to us today, God, as we come into your presence, Lord God, worshiping you with our attention, worshiping you with our tithe and our offering, worshiping you, Lord God, with our praise, with our worship, Lord God, with all of what we have, worshiping you with our life. We come into your presence today, God, to hear a word from you. We ask you, Lord God, to saturate this line with your presence, God. Do what only you have the capability of doing. The word says that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. So that includes the technology, that includes everything in this earth. So God, we give you rulership. We ask you to reign over these airways, Lord God, and to put us in a, a sacred space in the spirit that only you have the ability to create so that we can be in a, a, a holy bubble, God, so we can just be in your presence without interruption, all technology, all distractions, everything are pushed back and brought under your, your, your rulership under your dominion, hallelujah, we can dwell safely, Lord God, in this space and receive from you what we need for this hour. Wisdom, understanding, God, but what we need for this hour, God. So when we leave this space, we will be better equipped and better prepared and, and <clears throat> to face what we have to face this week, God, to answer what we have to answer. There are people out here in the world that are dying. There are uh, uh, all kinds of calamities and, and atrocities taking place all over the world. And people are looking to us as followers of you, your servants and your leaders, God. They're looking to us for answers, for direction. They take cues from us, God, from our attitudes, from our conversation, from our approach, from our methods, God. So we need to hear from you today, God. 
so we can be recalibrated and, and, and more transformed and transfigured into your likeness, God. So let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart today, God, be found acceptable in your sight. And anything that's not acceptable, love us, God, and correct us, discipline us with your spirit and your word today, God. So that when we leave this place, we can go back into this world. You can sow us back into this world and we will be those representatives, those ambassadors, those regents, those who have an answer for the questions that the world is asking right now. Let us be light. Let us be salt. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So how are y'all doing today? I hope everyone has had a great um, week so far. And the dancers to pray, you are looking exceptionally just, oh, woman of God. <laughs> you are my inspiration. I don't know about anybody else. But between this woman and Elder Joanne, boy, when they come on camera, they be like ready. And they are like my inspiration of what it looks like and what I need to pursue when it comes down to growing and maturing in grace and beauty. Because mm -mm -mm. these ladies hold it down for us. They show us how to make it do what it do. Right, Evangelist Sean? <laughs> they show us how we're supposed to make this thing do what it do. Yes, yes, yes. So let's go ahead and just open up the lines if anyone has anything that they would like to share as far as what God has ministered to you this week in your spirit, um, what he has given you to hold you, hold you down or to help you to keep your mind or to hold your tongue or have, if he's released a, a, a gift, a word, anything. Maybe there was a song this week that just kept playing in your heart and just kept you kept you focused that you may want to share with us today that one of our listeners may be encouraged and may go and, and listen to this song that you talk about how it blessed you and, and they may listen to it and be blessed by it as well. They never know what we share, you know, um, how it's going to affect someone else who could possibly be listening. So let us come on through and bless God. Mm -mm -mm. Greetings, 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 greetings and salutations to everyone, to my apostle Marguerite, to my prophet Jerry, to all my CEK family members and loved ones, and to Facebook. Um, this has been, um, I call my stretch week. <laughs> yes, it was a stretch week. Um, and I thank God for it. I thank God that I have lived long enough to be stretched and still want to be stretched. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, I'm not going to be stuck in stupidity. And that's for sure, because God is not going to bless that. <laughs> but he will bless your obedience to him. And he will bless what he has put in you to come out at the right time, the right season. Um. They, my boys are saying, oh, mom, you know, you, you look a little tired. You look, you know, he's, he, he's <laughs> when you're working. But it's like when you start, you know, when you go to class and you come back, you're all like, oh, yeah, look at God. Hey, you know. And I was like, yeah, well, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He just zooms me into a new level of understanding. So the scripture, you know, I was talking to the Lord and I was saying, Lord, you know, we're here on a mission. We're here on a mission to do his will. And you need to take inventory to find out if you're still on that mission that God has called you to be on. So he gave me, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Let me just, um, it's 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6. And I'm reading from the Amplified um, Bible Classic Edition. I'm going to read verse one and I'm going to skip down to the last verse. It says, therefore, since we do not hold and engage in this ministry by the mercy of God, granting us favor, benefits, opportunities, and especially salvation. 
we knew we do not get discouraged, spiritless, or despondent with fear, or become faint with weariness or exhaustion. I was saying, wow, that is true when you're doing the will of God. I'm going to go down to six. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness is shown in our hearts so as the being forth, the light for illumination of the knowledge of the majesty and glory of God, as it is manifest in the person and is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That blessed me. That blessed me to encourage me to continue to stay in the race, run the race. It's, and the scripture says, it's not those who start, but endure to the end. So where you at, just stay there. The reward is going to be out of this world. Holy so it's going to blow your mind. I've been blown away for the last, um, well, we in March, I started in February. And it was like, wow, look at God. But he gets all the glory. He gives all the glory and honor of people who he's placed in my life at this time. He couldn't have done it before because I would have made a shipwreck out of it because I wasn't at that level. But this is the season. This is the time. So carry the light that God has placed on you and enjoy the ride. God bless you. Amen, woman of God. I love what you said. Um, you said that, Oh, you said so many wonderful things. And I love that passage of scripture. But one of the last things you said was you would not have been able to do it, you know, alone. You would have made, well, you said that you wouldn't have been able to do it before you would have made a shipwreck out of it. And one of the things that you pointed out that's different about now is that you're not alone. And I know that that's not the totality of it, but it points to one of the things that we need the Lord. He, he, he puts us in community. In community, you wouldn't have been able to handle it be alone. The Lord, the, the Lord says, it's not good for man to be alone. And so the Lord knew the timing. See, his timing is just wonderful. Uh, he knew the, the time that he was going to call forth the gift that he had placed in you those talents when he was going to call for, for them to be given an account for. And him in his wonderful, uh, just uh, and fair righteousness would not have been a good God if he would have called forth in accounting from you the, of those gifts and, and called you to walk in another level of leadership and um, service in him if he had not equipped you and surrounded you with everything that you needed. He knew that you would not be able to do this thing alone. He put you in a community and put you in a tribe, gave you a new name, just kind of like just changed your lens, set you on high, gave you a, a panoramic view now. You're no longer looking looking at the little things that get in the way, but he set you on high. So you have a panoramic view. He said, come up higher, sit with me. I'm going to give you gifts. I'm going to give you some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists. Come on now, some pastors and some teachers surround you with them so that they can speak to the, the apostle, the prophet, the, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher in you and call those gifts and graces forward so that then you will know what it looks like so that you can now reproduce and do the same in the generations and those that are going to come to you who are going to need what you have. The Lord is very strategic, wise. He's so much, so much smarter than us. And so he knew when you would have the capacity, the community, the level of wisdom and understanding to receive, um, not just receive because you already received it, but to come to be made accountable for it, to be brought into a season of accountability. And now you are able to be accountable for it. And the work that he's done in your life, ooh, 
Well, just how you're looking right now is just part of the manifestation. But what did we read this morning? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Lift up your heads. Lift up your control center, your thought process, your mind, your perspective. Mm -hmm. O ye gates, oh, your portals, your ear gate, eye gate, mouth gates. Lift it up. To, and, and put it in, in heavenly places, speak from heavenly places, receive, eat from heavenly places, see from heavenly places, be seen from heavenly places, hear from heavenly places, be heard from heavenly places. So even your language and the things that you speak, they are being spoken from heavenly places. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And what will happen? Oh, the king of glory shall come in. He shall come in, he shall stop with you, and he shall therefore be made manifest in you and through you. And, and we see the evidence. So oh, look at you, woman of God. The king of glory has come in. <laughs> Sucked with you and manifested himself through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for the great work, hallelujah, that he has done in your life. Look at the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, woman of God. Hallelujah. All right, y'all, let's do this. Come on. Anybody else got anything to share? Woo. Well, 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 well. Come <laughs> on through here. Evangelist, bam, bam. Bam. <laughs> The people of God have gathered again. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. I'm telling you. Listen, if we look, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. You know what I mean? But sometimes you just got to press through, press through, press through. I'm telling you. I'm also going to know. Because we've been talking back and forth about all that kind of stuff. And one thing she said to me yesterday, she don't even probably know. Uh, we're not doing this today. <laughs> I was like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you know what? I, I'm t Apostle, that word, that little phrase right there, I had to speak to my, no, no, Sean, we're not, you know, when the enemy tries to come in, tries to bring doubt, tries to bring discouragement, you know, I was like, ah, well, I don't know. You know how we do? Come on, y'all. You know, well, I'm not, I'm going to speak for me. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you're going through, you know what I mean? The enemy will try to talk to you, you know, and, and you got to speak back, you know, to yourself, to your soul, you know, and say, so, no, we're not doing this today. <laughs> I said, I got to get on it and about <laughs> Listen, you know, uh, a love that's concealed is not really love. It, you know, when you when you uh, uh, reveal your love and you sometimes love is tough, sometimes love is confrontational. Sometimes you may not want to hear your, 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 your soul man. You know, your spirit man is like, yeah, give it to me. But your soul man is like, ah, you know, but we're not doing this today, Sean. <laughs> you know, I didn't know about we're not doing this. You know, I said, well, I ain't going to get on there and say that. I know them people probably tired of me coming on here saying stuff and all that kind of stuff. Why you always got to say something? And then I heard Jeremiah say, it's like fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shut up in my bones. My God, I can't even, I can't even keep quiet even if I wanted to. Ask my school teachers back then. <laughs> you can't say, sure, just keep mad at it. You know, but it was the fire of God. But anyway, I'm so glad to see y'all today. I'm telling you to be connected. I love what you said, Apostle. Just about, and, and you know, that's even manifesting for me. I took that for myself that maybe before <clears throat> I couldn't receive the things that, you know, like uh, Benz is the brand, you know, I couldn't receive all of that. Now I'm surrounded, oh my gosh, with the five fold. Woo, glory to God. Oh my, that's, I, I didn't have that before, you know, and I'm just like, my, I'm just eating it up, eating it up, eating it up. That's why I had to tell myself, Sean, we're not doing that today. We're not doing it. You know, get yourself together. Shape up, get your mind right, get your heart right. Come on, get yourself together. And so, and, and you know, and what he gave me, 
um, this morning, um, you know, because I, I, I guess a part of it was, you know, thinking about stuff that you lost, you know, because sometimes when you're in a, tr you're in the middle. You know, you think about stuff that you lost, things that you, you know, money. money. I lost some money, y'all. Like, for real. Like, some money. Thousand. Money. You know? And it's funny because I said, I heard the Lord said, you're going to restore. I'm, I'm going to restore your fortune. I'm going to restore. I'm like, fortune? What? Wait, God, I, I didn't really have, like, and when we think about fortunes, you know, like, we think about big amounts of money, like like millions and billions but your fortunes can be relative to your life right so when you're used to having thousands you know whatever maybe in your savings and it's all gone okay that's a large amount of money relative to your life right so he said to me in Psalms, it was Psalms 126.4. He said I, that my prayer, so I guess my prayer was like, God, it says, restore our fortunes, Lord. Streams re renew the desert, like streams renew the desert, right? So that's our prayer. That was my prayer. And then in Psalms 85.1, it says, Lord, you poured out blessings, you restored the fortunes. So when we're in the middle, so I'm in the middle of that first verse because we prayed, God, restore my fortunes. And then the last verse where he said, I've restored it. I've done it. It's done. It's manifestation. And sometimes we get, you know, and the God been talking to me about that middle, apostle, you know, just sometimes we get caught up in the middle. We get discouraged in the middle. But just hold on to the promises of God. I'm holding on to that manifest. Lord, you're poor. I'm going to start speaking that. Instead of praying, I'm going to declare the promise that, God, you restored my fortunes. I thank you that I look in the bank account and I see, I see thousands. I see thousands of, of yes, dollars. Sir. Lord, I see it in Jesus' name. Uh, the yeah. manifest as you poured out the blessings, not only on me, but my church mm -hmm. community, not only on my church community, but, but my family, God. You poured, mm -hmm. you poured the blessing. Huh. Mm -hmm. Woo! Glory, Glory. to God. Yes. I'm so I, I'm encouraged, y'all, those that are in the middle, get your scripture. Get your, get, your, get your scripture that you're holding on to and start declaring that. That's where you're going to go. That's where you're going to be. This is my restore. My, my fortunes are restored. Don't look at what your account looks like right now. Don't look at it right now. Because I said, God, I lost money. I'm, I'm not talking about like, you know, peace. I got peace. I got that. That's good. You know, I need some money. <laughs> Come on, money answers all things. You know, I, said, uh -huh. I need some money. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to be greedy, you know, because I want to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. So I'm telling you, God, I don't know. He's awesome. So, all right, that's it. <laughs> I'm so glad you shared those scriptures with us. I'm glad Woo! that you shared that testimony. Yes. Um, first, before I forget, I got to speak to that middle ground. Dr. Johnson preached a message, thought a message a while ago. I don't know, a few years ago on the middle ground. Dr. Johnson, you're going to have to dig it up, resurrect it, and you're going to have to refresh it, get an update on it, and bring it back around because that's a timely word that's relevant for everyone always because we're always going to be in the middle of something. So we need to hear that word again uh, really soon because um, it's in your spirit right now, this middle ground, and you know how God uses Dr. Johnson. I know she's going to just probably bring some things it's just going to add to what you got and y'all probably have a whole book by the time you're done with this middle ground okay <laughs> but um woman of god i just thank you so much for your transparency and i know that you and i'm grateful that you spoke what you did about uh being in that place with leaders that love that love sometimes is confrontational and when we understand what conf to confront means it simply means to get out in front of it doesn't mean to come up and, ah, honey, and, and tear somebody down. To confront something is to get ahead of something. And it's always good when it's done right. When it's done, 
Hallelujah. The way that God ordains it to be, you are getting out ahead and you are preventing some things that could be a potential catastrophe in somebody's life. And so that's all that is. And we just, I just want to say now, one thing we ain't going to do is allow the devil to feel like he's going to put a mute, a, a, a muzzle on you and stuff like that and make you feel like you got to be super, super Christian hero over there. And, uh -huh. and stuff. <laughs> no, it, it just is what it is. Okay. And we're going to meet you right there in the middle ground, right where you're at. Uh-huh. Hey. Because that's what Jehovah Shema would do, right? He is the Lord that is there, right where you are. You don't have to make like you're somewhere you're not. So we just ain't going to do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on through here, Elder Joanne. Woman what? of God. What? <laughs> yes, you're, you're off. We hear your voice. You've been off mute for a while. <laughs> you didn't know you were off mute. <laughs> she, just, she jumped back on mute real quick. <laughs> oh, Joanne, come on, praise girl. The, Let's hear it from you. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I didn't mean to do that. That was a mistake. I had no idea. But praise God anyhow. Praise God for just being here one more day. And everybody looks so beautiful, so refreshed and I mean, you can see the glory of God all over you. And I just thank and praise God for the uh, ministry. And I just thank God just for making it through one more week. And uh, I thank God for all the encouraging uh, uh, um, things, like even the affirmations that uh, Evangelist Smith has put up. And and I, I thank God for those. Those affirmations are helping me. Amen. So I know they're helping someone else, too. And uh, and I just thank and praise God for being here. And I thank you all. Uh, apostle for your kind beautiful words amen they lift me up praise god and uh i just want to thank god for just being here and being able to say thank you jesus amen amen i know that's right come on through here prophet hey greetings everyone i just want to speak to what elder i mean evangelist sean why don't elevator listen Evangelist Sean, you are so on point. You are so in the vein of what God is capable of, because let me tell you something. In spite of all of our losses, when we believe in and standing on God's word and trusting him, and don't let the enemy put a muzzle on your mouth and not say what it is that's stirring in your spirit, because those are the things that's going <clears> to <throat> release the blessing, because God already done restored you. But now it's, it's going to manifest with your faith. It's going to manifest. So let me prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that you have received everything that you have believed him for. He will restore everything that you have lost and give you more in the sense that not only your finances, but then the rest in the peace, the glory of God rests on you in the name of Jesus from this day forward. Continue to have that same fire burning in your spirit concerning the things that God said to you that he will do. And it will manifest. And, it's, and, and it will be in less time than you believe that it should take. Because God is not in time. God is not a respecter of persons. He's doing it for us all that's covered under this branch of Zion. And so we are, <laughs> listen. We are under open heaven. It's not a cliche. cliche. It's a true statement because we have the faith to believe God at his word. And so the things that God said, he's doing it. The things that you believe in for, it's already done. So you continue to operate in the principles of the kingdom. We know the principles of God what is what manifests the course of heaven to release the blessing over our lives. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. I just know that the excitement in your spirit is jumped into my spirit and I'm rolling with you. We are going with the flow. Amen. I'm just saying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, prophet. Prophet, what else you got? What else you got? What God done did for you this week? Come on now. I know he done did something for you this week. He done helped it's, you somehow. It's, it's, he's always doing something. Is there anything particularly you're talking about that you, well, that saying, you stretch just, it for? 
Yeah, I know. That because let me tell you, I, I mean, listen, you know, you know, I have that unconditional faith to believe God that even the feet, even where my feet tread, there's blessings because of who I am in the kingdom of God. This is not being braggadocious, this is being aware of what God said about me and what God said, I believe it, and I can see the manifestations of it, you know? And it's not only, it's not only only me, but any of you that know who you are in the in the perspective of, of uh the kingdom of God, you can see the blessings of God on your life as you can as you continue to believe him, as you continue to walk in the principles of the kingdom, as you continue and, and another thing, Vincent Sean, yes, you're not being greedy, you're not being hungry, you just are one of those. So uh, seed sowers, that's looking for the seed to sow. And in, in God's timing, and when you find that purpose, then God will release it, manifest it according to the purpose that he has seen manifest in your heart for, I mean, <laughs> but anyway, he's going to give you what it is your heart desire for the simple purpose that you are a conduit in the earth for somebody or something to manifest for his purpose. And yes, Apostle, like I was saying, I was I was thinking last night how everywhere that I walk, all the grounds or wherever I put time in, there's change. There's change for the better. There's there's change. And I mean, even though the enemy may have me feeling like, uh, this ain't for me, this ain't happening the way it need to be happening. But no, I have to see myself in a different light. I have to see myself different from the circumstances of who came before me and who's there now. And that's in any and every situation that I put time and effort in or uh, 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 make sacrifices for. And I see that it is blessed because of the anointing, not the of myself, but the anointing. The, 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 the things that I have trusted and believe in God, believe God for, it, it, it's, it's just like Joseph. He was, he has an anointing on him and everywhere he went, things manifested in his favor. And I mean, listen, there were some things and there's some things that I deal with now that makes, makes uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, time makes me take inventory and think. You know, someone said that, you, you, you have to take inventory on some of the things that uh, uh, that have occurred in your life to see the blessings of the Lord. And and sometimes I get that daily just because I hear the enemy, but I don't hear the enemy. Because as my wife said, no, we ain't doing that today. But we ain't doing it never because I broke the reverse. I ain't going back. I broke the reverse. So ain't no going back. So anything that the, the enemy tried to bring back to your, the forefront of your mind of who you were, know that you're not that person now. You're not who people will claim you to be back then and when. They knew you. They need to get to know you now because the oil that's flowing on you now will continue <laughs> to break some things off in their life. Listen, I'm going on and on, but I'm uh, I know that God has not taken his hand off of our lives. We can continue to trust and believe him in spite of everything that's going on around us in these these wars and rumors of wars. Continue to lift the people of God up. We can be concerned about those things that even though that you might feel like there's nothing you can do, but your prayers count, your prayers help. So continue to pray for them, continue to believe God for the things that he has given you insight and vision for, because it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. So every prophecy, everything that has been spoken over your life, continue the good fight of faith. Continue to teach your hands to war. Yes. 
get those scriptures in you. Speak those things when you have those dark moments, because mm. they're going to come. Yes. They're going to come. But when they do, you already have been equipped to push that thing to the side and keep moving forward. Do not lose progress of what you have invested in your life. Because God loves you. Mm. And he will see you through it. Because it's amazing, man, how and what's going on and how people are just being blessed. And listen, if he did it for them, he'd, he'd do it for you. It's it's coming, y'all. It's 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 listen. <laughs> Prophet, you said so much. You said at near the end there, you said, speak those things. Get the word of God in you so you can speak the words. He can speak those things when you have dark moments. See, <laughs> the word is a, the word brings light yes. to darkness. It and does. so when you are depressed in despair, discouraged, whatever it is that is a weight or a sin or an oppression to you, speak the word. When you have those dark moments. Because the word, at the word, is the entrance of light. The word brings light into that space. It casts out all darkness. Thank you for reminding of us of that. And thank you for Amen. what that little practical uh, 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 nugget that you, you said that you did for yourself. Because we can, we can take that all for ourselves. We need to, all of us need to break the reverse buttons in our vehicles. Okay? The vehicle which we are in, uh, traveling on this pilgrim journey, all of our settings need to be settings that either go forward or maybe in neutral for those times of rest, but never backwards. And we always talk about that, protect your progress, right? So that means that even if you can't move, stand your ground. Stand your ground or go forward, but never go back. Break the reverse setting, the reverse gear in your vehicle. Come on, man. That's so good. He broke the reverse. I love that. Come on through here, Dr. Johnson. I know you got something to share, woman of God. Listen, I sure do, <laughs> but I, I surely wanted to pick up what you just said. I said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. He ain't getting away with that. Uh, Prophet. Prophet, prophet, okay. Uh, we gonna need a message called uh, "You broke the reverse." Oh God, we <laughs> break the reverse. What? Come on now, I ain't going. Back. <laughs> the the reverse has been broken. Oh man, that thing is so much fire. That thing is fire for real. My God. Oh, that thing. Oh, glory. Hey, shine that at all side. Glory. That, Lord, that thing will keep you delivered for real, for real. Break the reverse. Ain't even no way I can back up. You know what I'm <laughs> I can't even back up for real. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. That That's so good. That is, that is so good. Um, But I bless the Lord. I'm telling you, I was, I was on the line with my my uh one of my bffs and sister friends on here y'all know her <laughs> the evangelist and i'm gonna tell you a fresh wind came on this word right here i'm gonna tell listen here it's familiar y'all go ahead and go to isaiah 55 but i'm gonna tell you if we if we uh, evangelist sean come on in here because we got to testify to what this word did. Okay, we there was it was no more English. <laughs> I can't hear you. Gonna have to come off mute. You gonna have to come off mute. Listen, y'all don't understand. It was a you know, we could kind of attest. We said it was a mighty rushing wind, yes, that came over our phone, our, our airways. Um, I, yes. We couldn't even speak English, even if we tried uh -uh. to. Uh -uh. 
Uh-uh. On the word that she's about to speak, I'm trying to tell, I'm telling you, y'all talk about the word brings life and life and power. That's what it was. So I'm going off you because I'm just. Uh, listen, listen, I hadn't even read, I hadn't even read the, I hadn't even read the scripture. Okay. I'm going to I hadn't even read it yet. And, but God had, he had breathed on that thing. It was like it was spoken with his ruah. Like I didn't even, I'm sorry, it came right out of my spirit. It came directly out of my spirit. It was no, there was no I in it. Okay. That's how that thing came out. And, and it was, it was like his, what he said, and I don't have it verbatim. And I, I don't know if you have it verbatim, uh, Evangelist Sean, but I know that it was it was something like, um, is is my word, my word will still be fulfilled. It was something like that. It was like my word will still be. It was like it it, it is still, <laughs> it's still my relevant. promise it's, will still come forth. That's what it is. Come, listen, what is it said again? <laughs> My, my promise is still relevant and will still come to pass. It will still come to pass. It will still come forth. Y'all, listen. Listen, I don't care. I don't care. This thing don't have no time on it. It don't have no, it don't have no date on it. You didn't miss it. Come on now. I don't know who's, I don't know who's listening on here or who will listen. You better hear what I'm saying. Okay. You did not miss it. It is still, his word is still true. If you did not, you look, let me tell you something. Oh, and it was, oh, oh, it was, it was getting into alignment and agreement. Like, okay, we have faith for it. You have faith to receive it, uh huh, and and you and you believe His word. You know God will will do it, so you have faith for it, and you believe that is true. So you got those out of out of the way, and and there's no you know there's no shadow of turning in it. But one one thing God said is that word has been released. It's been released to a specific place and a specific person when we are in when we get in agreement and in alignment it will manifest it's already been sent so 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 i'm gonna read this out of the amplified for my thoughts starting at verse 8 isaiah 55 verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down, listen, he already does sent it. He already does sent it. Sean, you gotta get that other scripture that went with this. You gotta get that other one. Uh, this was sent down, had come down from the heavens and return not there again, but water the earth and make it bring forth and sprout that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, listen, that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect or useless but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose. That word has purpose for his pleasure and it will produce the effect, it will accomplish it and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out from the spiritual exile caused by sin and evil into the homeland with joy and be led forth by your leader the lord himself and his word with peace the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the lord for a name a name of renown for an everlasting sign of jubilant exaltation and memorial to his praise, which shall not be cut off. I'm telling you, if you get that thing deep down and crunch on that, 
I'm gonna tell you what. That thing came forth. I'm snatching it, it, that it, word. It, it hit profit. What you said? I see. I'm snatching that word right out the atmosphere. Oh my god! My I'm snatching it right out the atmosphere. Woo! Wow. Snatch that! I'm listen because this thing right here, this thing. Oh my god! <laughs> I look. If you can imagine, the rain does not go back to the heavens. The snow don't go back. We got to get this thing and get it right and get it good. Understand that that word is waiting. Uh, it's waiting there. It's waiting in the space that he sent it to. He's he, Look, look. It's agreement and alignment. What we talked about is something. When it's not manifesting, it's not because it's not true. It's not manifesting because you're not there to receive it. You're not in this space. You're not aligned with it. Or you haven't come into agreement with that thing. You got to get in that. You got to get. That don't mean a specific location or destination. It don't mean you got to pack up and pack your bags. But you got to get in. Mm. Uh, uh, Sean, what's that other word you had? So, yeah, so then we, so then the Lord was just said, it's settled. It's set, his word is settled. So yes. in, um, uh, Psalms 119.89, mm. it says, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled <laughs> in heaven. Didn't we just talk about the, the, the rain and the snow coming from heaven is settled in heaven. It's settled. We talked about the, the court case. The when, court when case. Court, yeah, the court case. When it's when it's settled, like when a court, a case is settled, you it can't, can't even go be tried back. again. You mm -mm. can't try it again. It's <laughs> you know, there's no reversal. Uh-oh, we broke the reverse. <laughs> we broke the reverse. <laughs> it's settled. Settle. So, anyway, that's yeah. Settle. Settle. That, yeah, Settle. that's just a little part I'm, of the mighty Russian way. That was, I'm telling you, we had a whole experience, didn't we? We had an entire God just came and he just he just sat right there. It was like he was like right there, just just with with great assurance. With great assurance, because a lot of times we can think that we don't got all off track, all off course. That ain't got nothing to do. It ain't got nothing to do with the word that's already been sent. He's like, I knew you was fitting to go left. I knew you was going to make that turn. I knew you was going to do that. I knew you was going to do that. Right? This and that, whatever it is. He said, I still set my word. Get, get there. Jesus. Get in agreement, get in alignment. Oh and, and, and if faith and trust is an issue for you, then get your faith and trust up. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you, there is, we gotta, we, as people of God, we gotta be real. And this is real deal, raw, it's something, is, something is off. I'm gonna tell you, when, when the word of God, that God done already sent, he done already sent the word. And if if it that if you don't see that manifestation, it ain't nothing wrong with the word that he already done sent. It's settled. Mm -mm. Mm. It's settled. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Well, that's so good. And you and you the two words you said, agreement and alignment. And so it's not like he says, not about packing up bags and stuff, uh, physical bags, natural bags, but our spiritual bags. We got to change spiritual location. And it first starts in our heart with agreement, uh huh, and then an alignment. And that speaks a lot to relationships and things like that. And that's what we were talking about earlier with Evangelist Debrea how God, she had to come into alignment and get into that space and place where there were some apostles and prophets, evangelists and teachers, where she had that community, that tribe, where yeah. she didn't have the capacity to walk in, where then she would be held accountable for the gifts and talents that God had put in her. But God wasn't going to hold her accountable to the word uh, that he had sent to her before she was in a position to birth the word. She had to get around the midwives and those who would help to cultivate and bring it forth. Well, now she's got to be accountable for all the things that God has put in her life.
life because now she's without excuse. She has the whole community she needs. And that's part of that alignment piece. Yes. And so like you said, yes. that's another piece to look at. Besides the sin, the weight, our belief, our trust, we could have all those things, but maybe we're out of alignment. <laughs> out of alignment. And sometimes we're not in agreement. Sometimes we is. don't even like what God told us to do. Yes. I, yes. And I know what something that was something Dr. Cindy Trim said. You, sometimes yeah. you... You mm -hmm. might you might be completely out of out of agreement with it, and mm -hmm. and but yet you were made for him. Maybe you want to do something over here, or over there. You don't want to do what he said. That looked like it's more fun. Yeah. Ah. Uh -uh. No 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 no. He's saying if you fit to get the full manifestation of the word that I sent to your life, to the prophecy that I have sent to your life, you fit to get in alignment and in agreement with what I said. To do. That speaks to that spiritual location, that that spirit, that place in the spirit, in agreement mm. with God, in the spirit where He said, doing what He said, do, and loving it, loving it, and it kind of gets into the message of what I'll be talking about today, as far as you know, loving that walk, desiring that walk. Um, my God, oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, that's some good stuff. Woo, glory now, to God! I say, and I'm thinking about that agreement. And I, I wanted to just kind of think about the word, our words are in agreement with his words. So we have to say what he said. We got to speak. And so even though you may, like your heart may not be in agreement, you know, necessarily your mind, but just, you know, say what he said, declare what he said until you get into, into your you know, your mouth comes into agreement with your heart. And then, you know, it'll all align itself. You know, I like what you're saying. Instead. Yeah, get mm -hmm. get your whatever. Just like today, what I was saying, you know, about the fortunes. You know, I don't see them, but I'm I'm coming into agreement with what he said. That's right. But, and then I'm saying what he said so until I see what he what he said. Right. But I like what you said because I think people used to talk about you know fake it till you make it. That's not faking it till you make it. That's not what we're doing over here in the kingdom. What we're doing is we are taking God at his word. So even if our heart's not in it, at least speak what he's saying, because what, because word of God teaches us that faith comes by hearing, hearing the rhema word of God. So if God has given you a rhema, he's given you a prophetic word, then you need to speak that which he has said, even if it's not something that you desire because it's like, oh, I don't know if I could do it or whatever reason why, or something that you never thought of before because he has to introduce a thought to you, okay? He has to bring the bring that word to you um, that you're going to be or do something that you never thought of before. And so you got to speak the word, speak the word because that's what's going to create, that's what's gonna cultivate the faith because the word comes with its own faith in it to fulfill itself it comes complete to perform itself so you need to speak faith comes by hearing and hearing the rhema word of god and that is what's going to cultivate faith so we can so listen and and um uh, uh evangelist uh, Robert is in the room with us tonight. I don't know for how long, but he is here with us. I don't know if you want to share anything, Evangelist Robert, if God has uh, blessed you, you've got a, a, um, a testimony or anything for this week that you'd like to share before we get into our teaching today, but we would definitely love to hear you. And I know we need to hear from Melissa too, because she's, she's got a testimony. She's got a testimony. So whoever would like to come on through, uh, Sister Melissa, if you want to come on through and share your testimony, woman of God. Glory to God. God has been doing what only he can do. He has been doing impossible, miraculous things on behalf of the saints of God. Come on through, woman of God. Um, hey, everybody. Hey. I'm blessed to be here today. Listen. God has been exceedingly good to me and my family. Um, so my testimony starts with um, first of all, um, just realizing that everything happens in God's timing. So, in saying that, you know, I've been on a three to four month journey with um, purchasing a home and also 
um, with my son, well, we know that that he's been in renal failure for 15 months, but but we've been on a journey with this transplant plant at hand for the last three months. So in saying that, that's why I'm saying everything happens in God's timing. And that word alignment really means a lot. Um, so um, as far as my son, um, he was called originally in December for his transplant. And um, he was the second person on the list. So he was like the backup person. So he, you know, we got called and got excited. And um, of course, he was a backup person, so he didn't get the transplant. So we just still trust and, you know, believe God that his word stands. So January, he got called again at the end of the month. And um, he was the first person on the list. And he get in the hospital, get all his labs, get everything um, lined up to go to surgery. And he, he did a COVID test and it came back positive. Um, he had his both of his inject um, both of his vaccines and a booster, and it came up positive. Forty eight hours after getting out of the hospital, he had a negative COVID test. So I say, well, God, that's you. That what organ was not for him. You know, we want what's perfect. What you have set aside for him. So we um and so you know I you know of course keep encouraging him to keep the faith and don't get discouraged. Um, so we go into February and you know we cruising along doing you know doing our um our daily life and um and everything. So he and I was talking about a week prior to this and he and I was just asking him how you doing how you feeling and he was like I'm doing okay. He said I was just thinking the end of the month is coming up again. He said the last two times they called me um it was end of the month for my transplant so i'm i'm waiting to see if they're gonna call me the end of this month i said well we'll see but if they don't call you you know we know it's going to happen so i completely forgot about the conversation you know and then um and then it comes the end of the month here the end of february we um he called me and he was like i got called again i'm like what I was like, oh my God. So like, you know, like, I mean, I don't even know if this even happened that every month you getting called for, for an organ. Like who know that this will happen? All my years of doing nursing, I've never came across this. But we know when, when God is in control, he is in control. And everything happens in his timing when he have everything perfectly aligned just for you. So in saying that the first two times he got called, I wasn't home. I wasn't going to be able to be home for him. Um, I was, you know, on a different side of the coast, 2,500 miles away. And I had to depend on, you know, other people to relay information, to call my son, to, you know, FaceTime everything. But God fixed it so that, I was here. And actually, like about two weeks prior, I kept saying, telling myself, because I really was scheduled not to be here this week. Um, I was supposed to be out on the 28th on another assignment for like three to six months. Um, but about a week and a half prior to that, I was like, I don't know. I'm just feeling tired. I'm just feeling like I just need to go home and relax and rest for like a week. And, you know, I kept toying in my spirit. And then finally, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to call my recruiter and see if I can take that week, take next week, that extra week off instead of coming home for like four days, um, take the, the extra week off. So I called her and, um, and God worked that thing out because usually you have to give like a 30 day notice to change anything on your contract. And I literally gave her like, I don't even know if it was good week notice or something. I just stepped out on faith, called her. So God fixed it. So I was here when he got the call. I was able to be there for him and navigate through everything. Um, Cause it makes a difference when, especially you have someone with medical knowledge and stuff in these, a lot of these people I've worked with them in the past. So, um, so, um, so saying that, um, like I said, the first two times he got called, I was not in, you know, not even 
you know, able to be here, but we prepare for, for everything, you know, because we've been going through these medical things for um, some years now. And also, whoo, this house journey, <laughs> this house journey, Jesus, you did this. Because <laughs> this has been, um, it's been a learning curve. It's been a, a growth curve spiritually, um, naturally, and a learning curve in all, all avenues and all ways. Um, when I started this journey, when I started, I saw this house like about a month prior to actually jumping on board. I saw it and I was like, yeah, it has everything I want, but I don't know if I'm really ready yet. And then, um, cause my sister had told me about it. And um, cause the guy that go to church with us, he cut grass for the people. And so then fast forward, she was like, well, somebody put a cash offer on the house. I said, well, I guess that settles it. It's not for me. And, and I just totally dismissed it. And then a few weeks after that, she came back and said, oh, the cash offer fell through. I'm like, oh, God, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> you know, so when that happened, I was like, okay, then let's do this thing. You know, so um, I made the contacts and everything that I needed and um, got the ball rolling. Actually wasn't even on the market when I started this process. They literally put it on the market for one day to put it in my hands because it was totally off the market. That's when nobody... But God, when I say God walked through this thing with everybody that was um, on board with it. Um, so um, with the way that um, that I work and, you know, business setup, it goes to a whole different process. I'm not even going to get into all of that, but um, but let's just say it took a little bit of time and we have to wait on God. Like we said, it's timing is God's timing. I mean, there are times that I wanted to give up. I wanted to pull my hair out. I, you know, I called Apostle. I called Dr. Talisha. You know, I like, I, you know, like to keep this brain intact because um, with going through, I was going through the house. I was going through, you know, with my son and I go through a lot to get set up on jobs. Like the, just the mental part of getting set up on jobs. I can't just go walk off this job, apply and think I'm gonna work two weeks later. It's like a 60 to 90 day process of paperwork on top of paperwork. So I was doing paperwork on top of paperwork for work for this house and with my son. If so for a minute there, you know, God just kept my brain in order because I was able to do my job and focus on that when I had to and then set that aside. But um, when I started also, I didn't really have, I had money in the bank, but I didn't have money in the bank that the money in the bank needed for this. But when I say that money grew, it grew in those four months. And, um, and at the end, when they sent me the papers of saying what I needed at closing, it turned out to be like $20,000 less at the tape. I had what they told me I needed, but it was like about $20,000 like less than what I needed. So not only did God take me through that closing and then provided what I needed, he provided me a cushion to live when it was done, said and done, and do what I needed to do for the house of God too. So that's my testimony when I say that God is real, God is faithful, and as long as we hold on to his promises and keep our focus on him, he will come through for us. He most definitely will. So I'm out here in a what is it? Four bedroom, three bath house. I have a guest house out back that's really pretty much finished. Um, I have a little bit of work, but it's a one bedroom, fully functional um, space on two acres with a little red barn in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Ooh>. yeah. <laughs> Look at God, look at God. And prophet prophesied that, you know, that they were going to make some concessions for you. And I'm so great. We are so grateful to God. Yes. What it looks like when you just believe. This is, listen, believe the Lord your God and ye shall be established. Believe the prophet and you will prosper. You will prosper in that word. The word comes to prosper you and to, first of all, to prosper in, in, in itself, but to also take you along with it, to prosper you in it. And so we just thank God that you uh, received it. 
and that you endured uh, the process. The choice was all yours and God wouldn't have left you, he wouldn't have, you wouldn't have lost your salvation or any of those things. You just would have had to wait for the manifestation somewhere else, but you endured the process where you were and you received the prize for that. And so we're just so grateful to God for your testimony coming through and encouraging the people of God. And yes, I had the opportunity to go over there on Wednesday and walk the grounds and pour out a half a bottle of oil, you know, walk the whole perimeters down down the driveway to the gate where people pull in the gate, you know, and just anointed everything. Just call the place anointed sanctuary of God. And it's beautiful. So uh, we're just thankful to God for, for him just, just showing up on your behalf and your son's behalf and keeping you uh, in, your, in your right mind uh, as you did that, plus still do your work and growing your money. And that's because you're faithful too. This woman's faithful in her tithe and her giving and God, he saw about her. He saw about her and he opened doors for her. Yes, yes, yes. And blessed her, saluted her in the process. So we're just so grateful to God. Hallelujah. So listen, y'all, let's go ahead and get on into our uh, lesson for the day or message for today. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Get my mind right. Father, I thank you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you. <clears throat> so the title of today's um, message is Resting Labor. The Compassion of Jesus. It's, it's out of the compassion of Jesus that the Lord gives us rest even while we labor. Resting labor, the compassion of Jesus. Let us go to, wow, I didn't write down. Of course I didn't write down. Me and my notes. Oh, let me get to my page. It's Matthew chapter 11. Write this down here. Matthew chapter 11. Well, actually, no, we're going to start at, We're going to start at chapter 9, verse 35. <clears throat> and I'm just going to read scripture. Y'all know how we do here. Then from there, we're going to see what the Lord has to say about what we read. So I want to really establish, first of all, the compassion of Jesus. And this is what we see in the 35th verse of chapter nine, the compassion of Jesus. Regis is in the room, y'all. And then we're gonna go from there. All right. Verse 35, the ninth chapter of Matthew reads, then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places reported kingdom news. Let me see here. Oh, let me tell y'all, I am going to be reading from the message version, something that I, I don't think I ever do. So I'm reading from the message, uh, just so you'll know that. Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places, reported kingdom news, and healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they were, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples. How few workers on your knees, and pray for harvest hands. Mm. There's so much that I could just say about the Lord as our shepherd, but it is from his shepherd heart that this compassion flows. Chapter 10. Now, he's told his workers, the harvest is huge. So he said, on your knees, on your knees and pray for harvest hands. <laughs> So now we get to the 10th chapter and the heading is 
12, the 12 harvest hands, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. The prayer was no sooner prayed than it was answered. Jesus called 12 of his followers and sent them into the right fields. He gave them power to kick out the evil spirits and to tenderly care for the bruised and hurt lives. Listen, y'all, power to kick out the evil spirits, but be tender with the one who has the evil spirits to get that balance. This is the list of the 12 he sent. Simon, they called him Peter or Rock. Andrew, his brother. James, Zebedee's son. John, his brother. Philip, Bartholomew. Thomas, Matthew, the tax man. James, son of Alphaeus. Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite. Judas Iscariot who later turned on him. Jesus sent his 12 harvest hands out with this charge. Y'all, this is the charge now that he gives to us as well, okay? This is our assignment. This is our work duties. Don't begin by traveling to some far off place to convert unbelievers and don't try to be dramatic by taking or tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick, raise the dead, touch the untouchables, kick out the demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. See, all those things he's talking about, for them to do are the things he's already did for them. He didn't overlook them and try to go to some far off place to convert unbelievers. He started right there in his own town, in his own neighborhood. So he says, you have been treated generously, so live generously. Don't think you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment. And all you need to keep that going is three meals a day. Travel light. And when you enter a town or village, don't insist on staying in a luxury inn. Get a modest place with some modest people and be content there until you leave. When you knock on a door, be courteous in your greeting. If they welcome you, be gentle in your conversation. If they don't welcome you, quietly withdraw. Don't make a scene, shrug your shoulders and be on your way. You can be sure that on judgment day, they'll be mighty sorry, but it's no concern of yours now. Stay alert. This is hazardous work I'm assigning you. You are going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourselves. Come on. To, oh my goodness, think about, oh my goodness, think about the people that are always complaining about the heartache, the headache, the, 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 the strife, the whatever it is that they're going through. Maybe they are bringing too much attention to themselves. The Lord said, you're gonna be like sheep running through a wolf pack. Don't call attention to yourself. <laughs> you're gonna trap the attacks of the enemy when you do. Oh, let me just keep going because I just think about all the crazy posts and stuff I see of people just, just saying, believers just saying all kinds of stuff. Instead, be as shrewd 
as a snake, inoffensive as a dove. We don't have to, oh my God. I'm just gonna let the scripture, because this is not my message, but I hope y'all are getting this and I hope you are contemplating and thinking about the, the examples that we have before us in social media and on these platforms and even not just in social media, when we're talking to our friends on the phone, those who, those who may call on us for different things, the things that they're going through. Maybe this is a, a passage of scripture you wanna highlight so that you can share it with them, a piece of wisdom and instruction from the Lord that we are to approach this ministry thing and we are to relate in ministry and to those in the world as sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourself. Stop posting that crazy stuff. Stop inciting a riot and bringing attention to yourself, announcing your anointing and everything else. Be as shrewd as a snake inoffensive as a dove. Don't be naive. Some people will question your motives. Others will smear your reputation just because you believe in me. Don't be upset when they haul you before the civil authorities. Without knowing it, they've done you and me a favor. Oh, they've given you a platform for preaching the kingdom news. Come on. Do we preach the kingdom news when they do that? Or do we preach the news of, oh, y'all don't know about me news. If y'all don't know what God's done for, oh, y'all don't know who I am. Touch not my, you know, what, what, are, what are we preaching when they call us before? When they call us before the authorities, are we preaching? the kingdom or are we preaching our bio or whatever, our experience? And don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. The right words will be there. The spirit of your father will supply the words. When people realize <clears throat> it is the living God you are presenting and not yourself, I mean, and not some idol that makes them feel good, they are going to turn on you. Mm -mm -mm. Even people in your own family. There is a great irony here. Proclaiming so much love, experiencing so much hate. But don't quit. Don't cave in. It is all worth it in the end. It is not success you are after. Come on, y'all. In such times. But survival. Be survivors. Before you've run out of options, the son of man will have arrived. So listen, this is what the message say, says. I did not, I'm going to pause here and say, I did not go in and exegete the text and look at what it says in the original Hebrew to make sure that the, that the word that they're using as survivor actually lines up with the original intention of what Jesus was saying but we're just gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that it is. And therefore just look at that for a minute and just say that here Jesus is saying to the leaders that it's not success you are after in such times, the times of being you know, persecuted, the times of being hated for the gospel's sake. You're not looking for success. You are looking at that time just to survive. <laughs> to survive that test, be survivors, but understand this, before you've run out of options, the son of man will have arrived, my God. Verse 24, a student doesn't get a better desk than her teacher. Come on, y'all. 
A laborer doesn't make more money than his boss. Be content, pleased even. When you, my students, my harvest hands get the same treatment I get. If they call me the master dung face, what can the workers expect? Come on, y'all. So that's key. This message is going to be speaking to what Jesus does to help us to be content, pleased even, uh -huh, when we get the same treatment that he gets. If they call me the master dung face, what can the workers expect? Don't be intimidated. Eventually, everything is going to be out in the open and everyone will know how things really are. So don't hesitate to go public now. Don't be bluffed into silence by the threats of bullies. There's nothing they can do to your soul, your core being. Save your fear for God who holds your entire life, body and soul in his hands. My God, mm, 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 mm. when I think about that, I think about how the Lord is telling us to, to forget about ourselves, right? And that's what it says in, 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 in the um, message for this next section of scripture going into verse 29. It says to forget about yourself, right? And I think Jesus can say this so emphatically because he's already thought about us. He considers us. So we don't have to consider ourselves. For I'm thinking about you and making provision for you. That's what he says. So you can forget about yourself. I got you covered. Okay. And so verse 29 says, what's the price? What's the price of a pet canary? Some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to it even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you down to the last detail, even numbering the hairs on your head. So don't be intimidated by all this bully talk. You are worth more than a million canaries. Stand up for me against world opinion, and I'll stand up for you before my father in heaven. If you turn and uh, a tail and run, do you think I'll cover for you? Don't think I've come to make life cozy. I've come to cut, make a sharp knife cut between son and father, daughter and mother, bride and mother-in-law. Cut through these cozy domestic arrangements and free you for God. Well-meaning family members can be your worst enemies. If you prefer father or mother over me, you don't deserve me. If you prefer son or daughter over me, you don't deserve me. If you don't go all the way with me through thick and thin, you don't deserve me. If your first concern is to look after yourself, huh, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. We are intimately linked in this harvest work. Anyone who accepts what you do accepts me, the one who sent you. Anyone who, sex, who accepts what I do accepts my father who sent me. Accepting a messenger of God is as good as being God's messenger. Accepting someone's help is as good as giving someone help. This is a large work I've called you into, but don't be overwhelmed by it. Huh. It's best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. You won't lose out on a thing. Chapter 11, verse 1. When Jesus finished 
placing this charge before his 12 disciples, he went on to teach and preach in their villages. And finally, let's go all the way down to verse 27. And this is under the, 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 the uh, section in the uh, in passage of scripture that is called the unforced rhythms of grace. I love that. The unforced rhythms of grace. Verse 27. Now, Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. This is what he says. The father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father-son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Woo! <clears throat> I know that was a lot of reading, but that is the context of what we are going to be looking at. At the end of Matthew, Chapter nine, verses 35 through 38, we see the compassion of Jesus making moves. Come on, y'all. Making moves and uh, 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 mobilizing the harvest hands into action. All of, the, all of what Jesus does in the kingdom, the call, the mandates, the assignments, the anointings, the gifts, the graces, this is the compassion of Jesus making moves and mobilizing the harvest hands into action. The compassion that he has on our souls, those who are thirsty, those who are hungry, those who are broken, those who are needy. It's his compassion moving. And then when we get into chapter 10, we see Jesus now prepare his disciples not only to serve with these with, with the movement of and the rhythm of this compassion, but, but to lead in the very near future. See, they've been disciples. They've been walking with him, following, serving, training, preparing, being taught and instructed. But he's, his goal is to release them into this leadership role in the future where they will do all of what Jesus did without Jesus physically present, and then also be able to re reproduce leaders as Jesus was. He reminds them that his intention, he reminds them in chapter 10, that his intention is to re reproduce his leadership style in them and through them. And as part of this preparation process, he does several things. He, he challenges them. We see in verse 16 in the 10th chapter, he challenges them to be wise, but innocent. Uh -huh. Shrewd and wise like, like, like a serpent, but, but innocent, as inoffensive as a dove is. So that means we've got to deal with our attitudes, our tones, um, our, our presentation, okay? We need to be innocent and inoffensive. He, as part of the preparation process, he not only challenges them to be wise, but innocent, but he warns them about future hardships. We see this in verse 17 and 18. He warns them. 
And in 19 and 20, he instructs them on how to handle these hardships. Mm -hmm. And in verse 21 and verse 22, as part of this preparation process of showing, of, of intentionally preparing them to, to be the kind of leader that he is, he predicts their personal anguish. He's going to go through it. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're going to go through it. He predicts their personal anguish. And then finally, though, in verse 23, he gives them hope and an assurance of ultimate victory. Come on. that's He had the ultimate victory. And he passes that. He gives that to us. Hope and assurance. And then when we get into chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. That's where we arrive at the focal point of the teaching today. All these things that Jesus spoke to them and charged them with are commissioned to do. All these things we are commissioned. This is just not the ones in the Bible that he was speaking to, but all believers are commissioned to do, are accomplished with and in the unforced rhythm of grace. The unforced rhythm of grace. Mm -hmm. So what is unforced? Unforced is not produced by effort, not produced by something natural, uh, not compelled or constrained. What is rhythm? Rhythm is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. And what is grace? Hmm. The help or power given to one by God. Now, grace is a very extensive definition, but overall, in a summary, grace is the help given to one by God because God desires one to have it, not necessarily because of anything one has done to earn it. Grace is the power of God given to us. It's God's power that he shares with us. Mm, not because we deserve it, but because he desires us to have it. And so the unforth, unforced rhythm of grace that we are commissioned to accomplish all that God has called us to do. This unforced rhythm of grace, it is the strong, regular, repeated pattern of God's help, of God's power given to us without compulsion, without constraint, or without compelling from us but given solely based on his desire for us to have it. We accomplish it by the unforced rhythm of grace being strongly, regularly repeated, my God, endowed to us. It is his power performing the action and we do the action in this grace in his power. Being in this grace is to be enclosed in the grace, inside the grace, surrounded by his grace. This endowment of God's grace is necessary for us. It's necessary for us to find the rest for our souls that Jesus committed himself to making sure we experience as we serve and lead like him. It takes grace. If we don't have his power, we don't have his grace, we won't have his rest. And so he endows us with this grace that makes it necessary for us to find rest, making sure uh -huh, that we experience it as we serve and lead like him. We have to serve and lead from a place of rest. And his grace makes it possible. This is how Jesus empowers us to do so. 
through his grace. Let's look at this passage again, but from the perspective of Jesus speaking to us as his leaders, to whom he left all those instructions in chapter 10. Let's look at 11, 28 through 30. This is Jesus speaking to you. I want you to really hear him speaking to you. He's asking, are you tired? Worn out? Burned out. <laughs> Burned out on religion. Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Here's the key word, underline this. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Ooh, come on, y'all. This is his invitation to us today. Now, in the King James, which is what we're kind of probably used to hearing it from, this is what it says. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me. Me, I am the unforced rhythm of grace. Mm. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So listen. When you look at it in the King James, the keys you would want to underline is, I will give you rest in verse 28 and in verse 29, and ye shall find rest. So you can't find something in the Lord that he doesn't give you. If he doesn't want you to have a thing, I don't care how much you try to get a thing, how much you try to steal a thing, snatch a thing, if how much violence you try to put the kingdom of heaven under trying to come in and do a smash and grab, you will never receive it. He has to first endow you with that thing. He has to give it to you. Then you can find it. And he's saying, come unto me. All that labor, all of my harvest hands. See, apparently this rest is not for those who don't work. Mm. If you haven't answered the call, if you're not, uh, you know, in agreement and alignment, like we were talking about earlier, and you have not said yes to God and put your hand to the plow in that area that he's called you to, it's not necessarily pulpit ministry, it could be whatever it is. But if you are not doing anything in what he outlined in chapter 10, you don't get you, you, you don't get rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So now let's look at this word rest. In verse 28, in definition, it is to, because here he's giving rest, right? So it's to give rest, give intermission from labor. By implication, it is to refresh. So when you use it in a sentence or in, in usage, we see in the passage of scripture, I make to rest. Christ says, I make you to lie down in green pastures. I make to rest. I give rest to. And it's also, I rest. 
See, Christ is resting now. I rest. I take my ease. Okay. <clears throat> I take my ease. And also um, to give rest after the needed task is completed. Again, it speaks to those. It speaks to those who are laboring to experience, to give rest after the needed task is completed, to pause, to rest after precious toil and care. Mm -mm -mm. So this is the rest in verse 28. Verse 29, when we look at rest, it's still similar. It's just like from Three seven Greek three seventy two to Greek three seventy three. This is rest. This is a state now. Rest, cessation, or a termination to stop from labor. Refreshment, inner rest, tranquility, and so by implication, it's meaning recreation and rest. The resting labor that Christ provides for us flows from his compassion and models for us how we are to lead and empower people to accomplish their tasks Jesus's way in a way that looks like him and also pleases him. It pleases him to see us do our labor, to do our work, from a place of rest in him. And because he provides this for us from a place of compassion. This is the shepherd's heart of Christ that does this. He first gives us rest. It's up to us to receive this rest. He knows that rest is necessary for us to endure the journey, for us to complete the, the tasks, the assignments, for us to live out the call on our life. He knows that this rest is necessary for us to be able to endure this journey with joy, <laughs> having good success in our work and to reproduce leaders like him. You y'all know what work looks like when a person is not doing it from a place of joy. We we see that when we're in a restaurant, you know what I'm saying? And a person is serving us and they don't want to be there. You 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 can just sense that that they're just it's not their pleasure to serve you. Or whatever, wherever you're at, wherever you go to receive services, you can tell when it's a person, it's not a person's pleasure to do that. But he knows rest is necessary for us to enjoy this journey, to have good success and to reproduce leaders that are like him that he could be pleased with. So what he does is, and this is why I so love, since he requires a certain kind of leadership from us, a leadership that looks like his leadership, he, he, he gives us everything that we need in order to become all that he commands us to become, all of what he's spoken over our lives to become. So what he does, as we see here, I love what he does, is he first <clears throat> prepares, he prepares them. He prepared them by blessing them. Ooh and touching their hearts with his promise of rest before he asked for their hands to reap the harvest. Y'all see that? He blesses them with the promise of rest before he asks for their hands and sends them out to reap the harvest. He desires to prevent them from becoming like those we read about in Isaiah chapter 29, 13. The New Living Translation says, and so the Lord says, this is Isaiah speaking, these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me 
is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. <laughs> and so when we get out here, because he had said in, in um, which one was it? He had said <clears throat> in verse 28, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Are you burned out on these on religion, on, on doing what you believe needs to be done on the religious things? Are you burned out on that? He doesn't want that. He doesn't want us to become like these people that honor him with their lips and do all these wonderful religious things, but their hearts are far from me. You can tell a heart that's far from God is a heart that's not at rest. A heart that's anxious, a heart that's worried, a heart that's burdened. He says, and their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Singing these songs, repetitiously singing these prayers out of memory or whatever. This is, this is not what the Lord would have. So he desires to prevent them from becoming like this. So he blesses them ahead of time. He prepares them ahead of time because he understands our, our, our psyche, our soul, our whole makeup is set to the frequency of blessing. That's how he created us in the garden, okay? Before the fall, the very first words that we heard from the mouth of God that tuned our hearing to his voice were blessing. So here, as he's reproducing leaders after his own kind that have to look like him, go out into a fallen world and hear the, the cursing and the, and the negative and the degradation and the, and the blasphemy and all the other things, the negative things. He needs leaders that can go out into this world whose ears are tuned to blessing. So no matter what they experience out there, their hearts, their ears are tuned to blessing and they will always be serving and leading from a place of rest and not from a place of compulsion or you know, uh, th those areas where we find ourselves just doing things religiously and find ourselves uh, losing our joy in the process. So he blesses them with the promise of rest before he sends them out to reap the harvest. One of the ways the world is to identify Christ's leaders is from his leaders having this ability to lead and serve from a place of rest. Dr. Maxwell, he describes the rest for leaders as, um, as follows. He says, the word rest, and I love this right here, refers to an inward holiday. Mm, think about that. The word rest refers to an inward holiday, not a secession or termination of activity. See, we think rest means stopping, taking a break, not doing anything. Not saying that we don't need those moments that we don't do anything where we just, you know, rest uh, physically in our minds. But this rest that the Lord is talking about, uh huh, he's saying refers to an inward holiday. Come on, y'all. Can you, <laughs> woo, uh, 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 a whole new energy and motive. Many of us are more active. Think about it. He says many of us are more active on vacation than when we are at our place of employment or at work, you know, doing ministry. Many of us are more active on vacation than at work. What changes on when we are on vacation is our reason for this activity. We feel energized when we're on vacation. Because here's the key, we want to do certain things. It's getting back to what I was saying earlier. Oh, this is about trying to, to make sure, okay, that we are working from a place of desire and want that we are in this zone. And so 
We feel energized on vacation because we want to do certain things. Jesus describes a new relationship that changes us on the inside. Take note of what he promises to give us. Here's four things that John Maxwell says. Um, rest. Uh-huh. Let me, just four things. Rest, a framework, gentle and humble leadership, and a manageable load. So now let's look at each one. He promises to give us rest. He's talking about an inward rest that's free from anxieties. Verse 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We have to understand that rest mm, is actually an act of obedience. <laughs> Therefore, it requires faith. Any act of obedience requires faith to do. Faith and trust in God's ability enough to give up control of your life to him. Mm. Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 6, 24, the Amplified says, no one can serve two masters for either for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise and be against the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, deceitful riches, money, possessions, or whatever is trusted in. Whatever you trust in can be your mammon. Therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or about your body, what you shall uh, put on. Is not life greater in quality than food and body far above and more excellent than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, uh, sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth more than they? And let's skip down to verse 33. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. So do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. Mm. So no one can serve two masters, y'all. Either you're going to serve worry or you're going to serve rest. You're going to either worry or rest, but you can't do both. Inward rest, freedom from anxieties is an act of obedience and it requires faith. The ability to rest is a gift from God that he's already given you. But rest is for those who labor. If you're not laboring, you don't need any rest. And in framework, he promises to give us a framework. What is the framework that we see? Verse 29. Verse 29 describes our framework. The framework is a yoke. This yoke is our framework. <laughs> the yoke by which we are guided by a stronger partner, Christ. 
I know the word of God talks about being unevenly yoked. You can't yoke an ox to a donkey and get a good result. The ox needs to be yoked to another ox of equal strength. But here he gives us a yoke. And in this yoke that we have on us, that he is also yoked to, because we are yoked to his work, to his life, to his way of doing things and seeing things. This yoke, <laughs> with this we are guided by a stronger partner, that is Christ Jesus. He says in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn, learn, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. A lot of us have issues in our soul, in our mind, our emotions, anxiety, panic attacks, bipolar, all different kinds of conditions because we don't take the yoke of Christ upon us and learn of him and find rest for our souls. So what is a framework? What is a framework? So we can make the connection between the framework and the yoke. A framework is simply, it is the essential supporting structure of a building, a vehicle or object. Uh -huh. It is a basic structure underlying a system concept or text. So if we think about our yoke or his yoke, his yoke is our support. His yoke is our structure. His yoke is our guide. And this is the one time when we can say that it is good to be unevenly yoked yoked to and guided by the alpha and the omega. The one who the word of God taught us when we were reading earlier, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Uh, listen, who better framework to be living and walking and, and laboring in than the one who knows it all, has it all, who is our support, our rock, our vehicle, and the object of our faith. His word, his way is the system, the concept, and the text of all that we do, believe, operate in, look to, his yoke. His yoke is our framework. And then the third thing that he promises to give us is gentle and humble leadership. He promises to be an understanding leader who meets our needs. God, I thank you. Verse 29, again, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Mm -hmm. Gentle and humble leadership, as we see evidenced in his concern and compassion towards us to provide us with resting labor as we gather his harvest. There's so much I wanna share about this, but I don't really have time, but it really points to the shepherd heart of Jesus. He understands as he, he calls us sheep for a reason. He likens us to sheep as a reason. Because sheep, if they're not at a place of rest, there's so many, oh my goodness, there's just the calamity that comes into their life when the sheep are not at rest. And as his sheep, we labor, we do the work, but we are sheep. And it's so important for us to do everything from a place of rest. Sheep beget sheep, but the only way they can birth out these sheep is from a place of rest. Mm. And then the next thing he promises is to give us a manageable load. Thank you, Jesus. 
for the manageable load. Glory to God. A manageable load. We see this in verse 30. A system and a workload that fits who you are. That's what he promises. That will fit who we are. So even if you may not see yourself a certain way, as we were talking about earlier, not coming into agreement with what God says, because that's just kind of foreign or it's just not what you want. Guess what? The what the Lord has for you is a man is manageable. He, he would never give you something that is not designed for your good and to prosper you and to bring you into this place of becoming who you truly are and not who you and not remaining who you think you are. Mm-hmm. He, he gives us a manageable load, a system and workload that fits who we are. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you're not in a place where, you, where you're resting, where you're, you're not in a place, you know, where, you, where you're at peace and where you can see clearly uh, uh, what God has for you and where he's taking you to and you don't, and, and, and have joy joy set before you to continue to, 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 to do all that what he's called you to do to become all of what he's called you to become. It could be because you don't have his yoke on you, but you have a yoke on you that you've put on yourself or that the world has put on you or that the enemy has put on you, but you don't have the, the load that he has put on you. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You need to understand and trust that your mantle, your unique anointing, gifts, and grace that he has given you will complement and cover your design and empower the abilities Christ has given you. You have to understand a mantle not only brings anointings and gifts and graces, but it brings protection and coverage. It covers you. And so your mantle will complement and cover your design. It'll look good on you. And empower the abilities that Christ has given you. The word of God tells us in Matthew 25, 4, uh, 14, that uh, to some he gave, what's it say? Uh, to one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to another one, to each according to his ability. So he'll never give you something that you are not able for. Serving and leading in alignment with your unique mantle will be natural and instinctual for you. And because it's in alignment with your with your unique mantle, with the load, with the yoke that he has put on you, it will make your work joy. I mean, yes, you'll have to you'll you'll have times, you'll have deadlines or whatever, but doing your work will be the thing that you don't that you want to do more than anything. God, I talk about my work is joy. If, if, listen, I wish all I could do all day was just read and study and read and study and, you know, put together teachings and stuff like that, because this is what I love to do. I get joy from what I do. So serving and leading in alignment with your unique manner, it'll be natural and sinful and joyful. That's where you will have resting labor. You have resting labor peaceful, joyful labor from the place that God has ordained you to be. Jesus is the one who gives true rest, true rest, Uh, where, where your work is as if you are always on holiday. When I come to work here, I feel like I'm going on vacation. Even though it's cost and, and I have to produce, you know, it's, it's work on one hand, but it's, I'm, it's an inward holiday at the same time because I'm just so happy because God is always speaking and showing me things. It just makes me happy. So he gives you this true rest. In chapter 12, he reveals himself. We can say that, that he is the place of true rest because he reveals himself in chapter 12 of the book of Matthew. 
right after we finished in 11, that he is Lord of the Sabbath. He is Lord of rest. <laughs> he is Lord of the rest. So, so when we read this, what is this saying to us? What is this saying to us? This means when he says Lord of the Sabbath, that his authority is superior to the law of the Sabbath that was given in Exodus chapter 20, verses eight through 10, that we see the Pharisees and in, in, in so many times in the New Testament, them having a, a conniption fit over him doing work, what they call work on the Sabbath. He said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. My authority is superior to the law of the Sabbath that was given in Exodus 28 through 10. Every day is a Sabbath day as far as I'm concerned. Anything done in and through me in my name produces rest, even if you're working while you're doing it. You're resting. Exodus 12, 20, uh, 8 through 10. Let's look at the law of the Sabbath. It says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. So if he's the law, the Lord of the Sabbath, remember the Lord's day. Remember the Lord by keeping him holy, okay? Remember his agenda, his, his all of what he's calling us to do by keeping it holy, uh, making it a priority, keeping it preeminent. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. All right, so we're not going to get too much into that. Let's continue. He existed, bottom line, he existed first and foremost before the Sabbath even came to be instituted. Christ was. He existed before the Sabbath, had a part in creating the Sabbath. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath rest serves him. He doesn't serve rest. Rest serves him. It's his to give. Furthermore, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 9 through 11 New King James tells us that he is now our Sabbath rest. This is how it reads in the New King James. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased or rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience as we read that the, those who didn't get to enter into the rest fell in because of disobedience or fell out. Listen, Jesus finished the necessary work of atonement and then rested Oh, glory, is Sunday. And then rested in the tomb on the old covenant Sabbath of Exodus 20. Okay, as we see, on six days you'll work, on the seventh you will rest. Jesus rested in the tomb on the old covenant Sabbath. Then on the first day of the week, the first day, so we got seven days, the seventh day, which is Saturday, the Sabbath day, Okay, he rested in the tomb. On the first day, which is Sunday, is the first day of the week, is also called, I need y'all to get this, is also called the eighth day. Even though we know on the calendar there's seven days in the week, right? But the first day of the week, there are other passages of scripture in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that point to an eighth day. And we know that's the day that Abraham was told to circumcise on the eighth day after the son was born, right? There is an eighth day that speaks to a shedding away of old things, a shedding away, a renewal. Then on the first day of the week, which is called the eighth day, he rested in the tomb on the Sabbath. On the eighth day, he arose alive, alive. 
this represents the restored presence of God because in that middle ground right there for three days, the presence of God wasn't there. Christ was asleep in the tomb. He was, well, we know what he was doing, right? He went down into Sheol. But for those three days, no Holy Spirit, no Jesus, three days. Uh huh. But on that first day, that eighth day, to become the eighth day, the actual eighth day, the restored presence of God, Christ Jesus, is seen in the manifestation of the two angels sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where his body used to lay, just as the two cherubim sat over the Ark of the Covenant where the presence of God appeared when the blood of the sacrifice was sprinkled on the mercy seat. The resurrection of Jesus on the first day is referred to as the eighth day in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 36 through 39. There's a lot that can be said there, but we're just gonna look at 36 through 39. At the institution of the Feast of Tabernacles, we see this uh, uh, referred to as the eighth day. It says this, Leviticus 23, 36 through 39. For seven days, you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly and you shall, no, you shall do no customary work on it. Talking about the eighth day. On the first day shall be, we're gonna skip on down, on the first day, there shall be a Sabbath rest. And on the eighth day, a Sabbath rest. So from creation to the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, the Sabbath day was the seventh day of the week. But here we see an explicit reference to the eighth day, to the eighth day Sabbaths. Um, being attached to these special festivals, these times of special worship and meeting with God, as we read with the institution of the Feast of Tabernacles, which speaks to, which is something different, but it also points to Christ, right? It's on this eighth day, not the seventh. It's on this eighth day that the glory of God's presence is made manifest to his people as we see in Leviticus and as we see when Christ arose from the tomb. It's on the eighth day, this Sabbath rest woo, comes and it's on the eighth day that Jesus uh, uh, brings about uh, the new creation, the new covenant through his incarnation, death and now resurrection. And so by doing this, he fulfills God's vision original vision for the Feast of Tabernacles in the first place, which the overall agenda for the Feast of Tabernacles was to restore the lost presence of God to his chosen people so that they may become a, a sign to the world and draw all men back to him. Oh, so whew, so we thank the Lord that, that the tabernacle, Christ was the tabernacle. He was the tabernacle of God in the earth. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God, for he has entered his rest. He has entered his rest. <laughs> he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. It's time for us to cease from the works of doing things in our flesh, in our natural mind, in the things that only we agree with, those things that only we feel comfortable with, the things that we want to do and get to this place where we are working from the labor, from the yoke, from the mantle, from the call, from the assignment, from the word, from the promise, 
from the place, from the location, from the unforced rhythms of grace that God has called us to, to, to live from, to, to work from, to labor from, to serve from, to lead from. It's time for us to enter that place of rest where the yoke is easy, where the burden is light, where healing and refreshing is perpetual, where you are on a continual inner holiday in your soul, where the Lord is seated. He's, he's rested. He's had a place of rest. And he's called us to be diligent to enter into that place of rest. So listen, I, I, I just, I'm just going to stop right there for now. I, I'm just going to stop right there because there's really not much more I, I can do with this for right now. Um, maybe next week we'll talk a little bit about the need for sheep um, to have this kind of rest, the importance and, and what all that Christ has done to make sure that that takes place. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see with the Lord. But my, my prayer is that your walk and your work with the Lord become your heart's desire. Become the place that you want to be. Become that holiday, that holy day, that holy way, that holy pursuit in you so that your labor in him, however he has designed and mantled you, to be a harvest hand, that your labor in him is done from a resting place and, and feels like a holiday to your soul every time you show up into the field. That's my prayer. That's your, my prayer for you, that your work feel like a holiday to your soul. God bless you all. God bless you all. So let us go ahead and prepare. <laughs> prepare to come on through here. Um, I know I just kind of like dropped it right there, just kind of left it there for you, but uh, cause it's just kind of unfinished, but we, I don't want to get too long out here in the day. It's just important to me that you all come to this place, come to this place come to this place of rest, come to this place of rest through the unforced rhythms of grace. Ooh. That your work it's, be done. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, woman of God. Okay, I got another book written here. Um, oh. thank, you. <laughs> thank you, apostles, so much for um, this. It's, it, it lined up with what I was talking about earlier about and you know um and i was saying lord you know <laughs> it's his confirmation even everything that everyone has shared prophet and dr johnson and Van Blue, everyone to share it this morning it gets lined up with what i, I needed a, a clarity i just needed an answer and it was like okay lord okay i need to learn how to rest in you because i know one thing i know is that you're not putting more on me than i can bear that's, that was number one. I had that fully persuaded in my mind. There is a joy in what God has uh, is allowing me to do. And he told me it's necessary, so I'm going to be obedient. So when this came, lined up with the scripture, and I thought, and, and Apostle did an awesome teaching on the shepherd. Um, so I can relate to what you were saying about the, uh, the good shepherd. One part was God does not work up to work around your, what you know, like traditions or rituals. You have to really get rid of all of that. That will get staggering you, that will get stop you from doing what God is calling you to do. It's like, well, I haven't heard it here. I haven't seen it there. You know, it's called wisdom and stepping out with God in faith. The other part was about the yoke, you know, the, the yoke supports you. It's, it yoke, to me, the yoke, God's yoke, is my support system. He's not going to let me fall. He's holding me up. He's holding you up. He is the retention beam. You know, when you build a house, they have one beam that's going to anchor everything else. He is it. Um, I get all excited. Okay. That's and then good. I thought about 
when he's giving out the instructions and he's blending these talents and gifts that he's already birthed into you from the very foundation in heaven before we manifest the here on earth, it's like a baton. You know, when they're in the race and they pass the baton on, God has already passed the baton on because he went before us. He paved the way. He laid the directions. And that's what he, and I thought about the disciple. And that's why he said, you know, go into the harvest. He said, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. We are his laborers. Let's go and do some harvest for God and rest in him. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that feedback. And I love how you just brought more clarity to how the, that supporting being, you know, and how that yoke is what supports us. You know, so I mean, I know I said that, but then I got another visual as you were saying. So if you go to stumble or whatever, you know, no, it's because you got that yoke and you got the stronger partner, it's going to hold you up. You don't fall. <laughs> you don't fall. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else want to share anything before we get ready to go off to the sunset? Praise God. Praise God. It was awesome. Awesome, awesome word. And you know what? Um, and I know we can probably attest to this. We've been in church for a very, very long time, years and years. And what, you know, you're teaching today and just things that I've learned, you know, I would say that the past maybe five or so years, um, you know, because we've been brought up to work, 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 work you know, work, 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 work you know, <laughs> Rihanna song, you know, and to... And, and, you know, and I think about the, you know, in church, the, 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 um, the women in the kitchen, you know, we've all experienced that, throwing your food in, nasty, you know, and understanding that the rest is necessary, you know, and, and resting in what God has called you to do. His yoke is easy. Like the thing that God called you to do, you know, will coincide with your purpose and, you know, things like that. So it's like, for example, teaching to me, I get paid to do what I love. You know what I mean? Like, I, get, you know, and that's why I know what you said, Apostle. It's like, I could do this all day. And I tell my, um, you know, my Dell Tech students, I said, y'all got to pull my coattail because when I start teaching accounting, I'm just like, gah, 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 you know? uh, but, but that's what you're saying, that it's not, you know, so if you're, you're so I'm kind of looking at it like this, if I'm in doing something where it's a toil, then I maybe need to reevaluate and do some inventory on, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, and so I really, because even when I was an accountant, I wasn't really fulfilled and satisfied. It was, it was to me, it was, it was just like, ah, you know, I wasn't really happy and, and in that rest, but I love what, you, you know, what you're saying and what Jesus is teaching. And I like what you said, uh, that Jesus's goal is to reproduce his leadership style in us. That is so good. He's like, learn from me. And so we have the word of God, you know, Jesus's walk, you know, the gospels to see what he did, how he did it, you know? And so that, that was really, really awesome. But um, it, you said that it, we must leave from a, and serve from a place of rest. We must, that is, that is essential because we are going to, if not, we will bleed on the very people that we're supposed to be leading. If we're, we're hurting and angry and mad and, you know, things like that. So making sure that we have that time where God can pour back into us and we can get our filling station from him, get instructions, get guidance, you know, because he wants, he wants you know, his leadership all around. You know, on this earth, he's reproducing him, you know, on this earth. So I want to be, and we want to be, you know, just like Jesus. So thank you, Apostle. It was, it was good. It was good, good, good. 
Ooh, that's so good. And you're so right. He's re reproducing it all around. People, this is not restricted to pulpit. This is not restricted to the work in the temple. This is this is his leadership. He wants to see it everywhere. He wants to see it in schools. He wants to see it in courthouses. He wants to see his leadership style. And people need to be leading and walking um, and, and doing the work from a position of rest. It needs to be in their DNA. It needs to be instinctual. They need to see um, and, and they need to, it, he actually commands us to do it from a place of rest. So if we're not finding rest in, in this thing, we've got to really go back to him and, and, and just, just allow him to minister to us and get some insight as to why we're not getting rest. Is it, be, is it because we are out of alignment or, you know, what is the thing that's getting in the way of us experiencing resting labor? Because he's calling us to that. He commands us to do that. Just come on through here, woman of God. Um, you know, when I think about it, I often think about, uh, when I think about the rest, I think about abiding and dwelling. Um, you know, just being in a place of, of living in, um, and, and in that, in that space, um, you know, I think about if you abide in me and I abide in you, you know, we, we should be, um, you know, really living in that, in that space. Um, so I think, you know, sometimes people like to, um, you know, I've just been in conversation with many different people and it's, it's almost like a, um, something like a to do, you know, like if I don't, you know, I never want a person to get confused with rest as I, I went to bed and I got, got eight hours. <laughs> um, but to be in a, in a space and place of this, this is, this is my dwelling. My dwelling is, is peace. My, my dwelling is, is this abiding. And so, you know, in his presence, and so um, that's all I wanted to just state, you know, just as far as, because um, I'm no stranger to labor, <laughs> but I used to be a stranger to rest. I can tell you that, <laughs> um, you know, been there, done that as far as being a workhorse, but I found that I found that space and place, you know, abiding in his love and abiding in his presence you know, that I'm, I'm not, I'm not a workhorse being whipped, you know, um, or being driven, but I'm, I'm being led, you know, in a, in a place of, um, of peace and, and it doesn't even feel like labor and nothing that I, nothing that I do. I always feel refreshed and revived and recharged. I actually, you know, like Jesus said, it's my nourishment. So it's very fulfilling. It actually gives me strength. Mm. So, yeah. Amen. Especially, you know, being led by a, str the str a stronger partner, you know, he's like, you know, take my yoke and, and let me lead you. And, and so, yes, yeah, so yeah. whatever he calls you to, you know, he'll anoint you for, and it'll be like a, doing the work will be an inward holiday. <laughs> Because you have Absolutely. that stronger partner leading you into that into that harvest field. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. That's so good. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. <clears throat> Come on yeah. through, Elder Joanne. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the word. The word. I I thank God for the word because it's it's speaking, it's speaking, it's speaking to my heart. And verse 28, the rest, that inward rest, free from anxiety. You know, that that struck me so, you know, it just really struck my heart because that's what I I go through. I go through that anxiety. And in, in, in how you said any act of obedience requires faith and trust. And I say that all the time, but it's not being manifested because I'm still not in that rest. I'm still coming from a different place and it's not from rest. And so that, that helps me a lot and to give up control to him and to give up to and give up control to him 
freedom from anxiety is obedience to God. And I, and I love that. Like you said, take that, the framework is to take the yoke upon you and be guided by someone stronger than you. And praise God, uh, that like, that just shifts my mind to think in a better, in a better way than, you know what I'm saying, than, than having my mind think that I'm the one that the people are looking at or seeing when it should be Christ that they see, you know? And so, so that, that, and I thank God for that. That's a blessing right there. And, uh, and I just thank God for it. And it revealed, and, and when you said in about manageable load reveals himself as the Lord of the Sabbath, you know, cause I, I, I kind of didn't understand about the Sabbath either, whether it was Saturday or, but I see that you're saying this every day. 24 hours, seven days a week. That's when the Sabbath is, you know, because God, he is the Lord of the Sabbath. And if he's my Lord, then, then uh, I'm, I'm celebrating him and resting in him every day, 24 hours, seven days a week. But well, that's a blessing to me because I don't know if uh, anybody told me, but I did a Zoom, praise God. <laughs> it was so funny. I did a whole Zoom for an hour but I didn't know how to cut it on. <laughs> it wasn't on the whole time. But anyway, I, I just thank God because now I know better. And now, now when I do it, I'll have these tools, these un understanding of it's not me, but it's Christ that liveth in me, which is my hope of glory. So I just thank God for this message today because maybe that's what I needed to do, wait for this message. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So I just thank God because I can rest in God and 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 uh and believe God that uh anxiety has been replaced with rest. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm glad to know that it was right on time and, and something that you needed um for, for where you are right now that blesses me to know that. Praise God, praise God. Well, anyone else before we call it a day? And I do want to ask Evangelist Sean to close us out in prayer today, if she's available. Um, yes, Lord, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Well, I thank you all. Oh, the prophets can really come through. Yeah, well, praise God for your labor. Um, when when I've when I've listening to the word, there are so many points of reference that I can come from, but one thing stood out on is when you was teaching about when you're fasting, when you did that teaching on Thursday night in the Bible Essentials, and I, and I thought about the fact that you mentioned so profoundly that when we're fasting, we're fasting from ourselves. In other words, it's not in our strength. So I equate that with the rest. When, when we are resting, we're resting from our own efforts of trying to accomplish what only God can do. And what God has already given us the tools and the, uh, um, the ability to operate in the essential essence of what he has directed our path to. Now, a lot of times we may be getting ahead of him or getting outside of the perimeters of what he has allowed us thus far. I think about uh, what Debrea, what she said in the beginning, she wasn't equipped to have this ability and the capacity to receive on this level in this season that she did not in the season time past. But as she proceeded to pursue God, God released those things and encircled her and encamped her in a camp where she had already had been positioned to come in and to absorb what is needed to build her up to this place where she's at today and to release in her, her ability to do exceedingly and, and abundantly above all that she could have imagined. In essence that she didn't do it in her own strength. She rested in who God says she was and what God says she can do. Now, had she just proceeded to make those 
attempts to go above, which she couldn't have possibly seen that because that's not where, that was in the, in the position that she was in to receive from someone that had that ability to take her to the level that she's at now. So she waited on the Lord and rested and trusted his ability in her and not her ability. And so she denied herself the desires that she perceived that she should be or had desired for and rested in what God had placed her in in this mm -hmm. season. In other words, mm -hmm. we have to fast from our own ability. In other words, don't do it in your own strength. Yeah. But do it in the strength and the might of the Lord that has given you the peace and the rest to accomplish all things. Mm -hmm. But it goes back to this. We have to follow the example of Christ. Yeah. Because when we when we're when we're walking in alignment with what Christ has outlined for us to get to that place and point in reference in life to start the process of elevating, coming to be an example of reflection of what he is and what he has said that we can be. It is there and is then that the anointing reign in our lives. So there in the process of when we, we're witnessing the spirit that's in us will calm the spirit of the people mm. that we approach for evangelizing, mm -hmm. for ministering the gospel. Because you, you meet people with less resistance when you're walking in mm -hmm. submission to the will of God. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's so much. It, 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 it was wonderful teaching, and I and I bless you, woman of God, and yeah. may the Lord pour back into you what you have poured out to us, and, and I thank God for you. Ooh, Amen. Thank you so much, and you said so much. Uh, I just love it, and I love what you left us with. You know that the spirit that we come in, and that's part of what we were reading in ten, chapter ten. Mm -hmm. He talked about you know, how to go, how to, how to, you know, how to be out there, how to, how to minister to people, you know, how to greet them, be courteous and be gentle in your conversation and uh, withdraw quietly, you know, don't make a scene and, you know, people will question your motives, you know, but <laughs> he says, don't, don't worry about it. The right words will be there. The spirit of the father will supply words. And, and um, he's calling us to reproduce rest. But we can't do that if we don't start from a place of rest. When we come yeah. to minister and we offer people salvation, peace, and rest with God, how are we going to give something that we don't have? Oh, exactly. <laughs> it would be it would be it would be witness in a person's spirit yes. if you're not if yes. you're not resting in what you believe. That's right. You know, Amen. So it, that's so good. That's yeah. So good. <laughs> All right, thank you all so much. We are, whoop, whoop, whoop. we have another epic day down in the books here at CEK Ministries. The word has gone forth, the teaching has gone forth. We have amazing teachers here and I'm just grateful to be counted in the number. I look forward to everybody when y'all minister. So uh, thank y'all for, for, for letting me speak to your hearts today. We give God the glory. Let's go ahead and hear from Evangelist Sean as she closes us out in prayer. We'll see y'all tonight at eight o'clock. Praise God. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let us just pray and talk to our God. Father, we thank you, God, for uh, just like Apostle said, another, hallelujah, another explosion in the spirit, Father. Ha, another time where you, God, have poured into us the things that are needful and necessary for our walk. Father God, as leaders, God, as, as we want to, hallelujah, be just like Jesus, God, as the teaching went forth today, that we will enter into 
the rest, hallelujah, that we will learn from Jesus, that we will take his yoke upon us, and that we will flow in the unforced rhythms of grace, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in us. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do through us, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. Father God, keep us. <coughs> keep our minds. Hallelujah. Keep our spirits, God, connected, fixed, and focused on you, God, so that we can do your work, so that kingdom agenda, the kingdom agenda can be advanced in Jesus' mighty name, God. Thank you, God, for equipping us Thank you for showing us. Thank you for leading us and guiding us, God. And so, God, now we pray over Apostle, God, and all that she's poured out. And, God, we come into agreement that she will be uh, poured back into, God, the virtue that she's poured out. Lord God, the power that she's poured out, Father. God, pour back into her. 30, 60, and 100 fold in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for her obedience to your spirit. Thank you, God, for your obe her obedience to the will and your word. God, we declare the, the word of the Lord over prophet, Father. God, thank you for strengthening his body. Thank you for healing him, God. Thank you, Lord God. You are so faithful to our leaders, God. And God, we lift up our leaders like Aaron and her, God. Lifted up the arms. Hallelujah, Moses, God. We lift them up, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for them strengthening them, Lord God. Thank you, God, for strength and power. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For pouring into them, God. Hallelujah. The virtue needed to lead this great people. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit they're leading your people, Father. And we thank you for it, Father. Father, we declare that our week is blessed, that our families are blessed, that our homes are blessed, our vehicles are blessed, our workplaces are blessed. Lord God, we will enter into a special rest this week. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Thank you for favor that surrounds us like a shield. Thank you, God, for goodness and mercy following us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say the Lord bless and keep us. Lord, make your face shine on us and be gracious to us, God. Lift up your countenance on us, Father. Bless us with peace. Woo, shalom. Nothing missing, lacking, or broken, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. We say amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you and amen, amen, amen. Love you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. And if you can, meet us back at 8 p.m. tonight on Facebook Live as we have our wisdom uh, call tonight. Let's come back and see what the Lord is still yet saying. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Thank you.